freak. You're damn right I want to be a control freak. You're damn right I want control of my schedule, my time, my agenda, my freaking energy. Because if I have control of my time and my energy, that means I have control of my life and my legacy. And if I don't have control of those things, then who does? Someone... What's up, freaks? Welcome to another episode of the Steve Eckert Show podcast. And listen up, I get I get asked regularly this that my my schedule, my the way that I'm disciplined, and and all this other stuff. How it's it's just I'm just a control freak. And why am I such a control freak? So we're gonna dive into the real facts, and we're gonna do a deep dive into control and being a control freak, and why I'm a control freak, and why you should be a control freak, also. This, the Steve Becker Show, as you know, is a show on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset, guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your mindset, your family, your fitness, and your business, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. This is where you create a, a lifestyle, the personal ideal freak freedom lifestyle. We go over this every week on this show so if, if you haven't watched previous episodes, all these episodes kind of combine together. They all work together. They're synergistic. And today we're talking about being a control freak. And we're going to dive pretty much straight, right straight into this. And I, I always like to dig in and start off with quotes. And, and today's quotes, usually the quotes are pretty heavily based on Stoic philosophy. And today's going to be no different because when it comes to control and what you can control, what you can't control, it is, that is one of the foundational elements of Stoic philosophy. So uh, a, a quote, a saying, I don't even know, some of these, I don't even know who they were, who, they're, who, who they claim said or whatever, doesn't matter too much. If I know it, I'll say who it is. But so there's a quote, although we can't control which roles are assigned to us, it must be our business to act our given role as best we possibly can. Like you don't get to choose where you start off in life. You can choose the direction you go in from there, where you head from there. You absolutely freaking can choose that. So it's it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. That's all there's all basics of the foundations of of Stoic philosophy. And we're gonna dive deep into this on a personal level through some stories and and whatever else. And the the another Stoic quote is the more you seek to control external events, the less controls you'll have over your own life. You can you you have control over your own thoughts and actions, but not over the thoughts and actions of others. And when you control your thoughts, you control your fucking life and your future and your legacy. When you're able to control your thoughts, which most men are not capable of controlling their freaking thoughts. And you need to, to take control of this. And I'm sure you've heard of it, like the, diff, the, the, the time between stimulus and response or whatever else. And, and that's Listen, I call that judgment, the judgment time, the judgment day. This is your reaction time. It's the time that passes between stimulus and response. And it's your chance. That, that's like really where you're determining the outcomes of your life. And you have, you don't have control of the stimulus or the shit that happens to you, but you do have control of your judgment of it, that judgment day time in between, and you have control of your reaction, how you react to these things. And it's this is part of what being a fucking human is all about. We're not wild animals. We have reason, which makes us human. We have the, the ability to have self-awareness and a conscience and imagination and independent free will. This is what makes us different than a, a fucking wolf running around in the, in the, where the hell the wolves run around in the garden, not in the garden. Why am I going to say the garden in the forest? Wolves are in the forest or the jungle or wolves in the jungle. All right. Wherever the fuck wolves are, that's what makes us different than wolves is we have the freedom to choose these, these, the, the, the way that we respond to all the shit that happens to us. 
We have a conscience. We have imagination. We have independent, free freaking will. This is the reason. This is what makes us human and different than all other animals. And it's our choice, our freaking, these judgments, this judgment time that's going to decide on your success, your future, and your happiness as a man. The, the Stoics thought that there were really only two things that we have absolute, without a question of a doubt, direct control over. And that was your voluntary actions and how we think about things. It's your actual, bond, not involuntary actions, but you get startled or scared or flinching or whatever, or fear for your life. Those are involuntary actions. Or let's say your face turns bright red. That is an involuntary action. You can't control that, but you can control how you think about it and how you react to those involuntary actions. So the voluntary actions and just how we think about things are the only two things that you have absolute control over. Everything else is outside of our direct control. So when it comes to being a control freak, you're damn right I want to be a fucking control freak. You're damn right I want control of my schedule, my time, my agenda, my freaking energy. Because if I have control of my time and my energy, that means I have control of my life and my legacy. And if I don't have control of those things, then who does? Someone else or something else does. And I want to be the one in control of my time, energy, life, and legacy. So this is all about what you can control and versus what you can't control. And as men, we usually stress and focus and put all of our energy and we get obsessed on the things that we cannot control. And then we neglect the things that we can control and we have it ass backwards. And that's not the way that we should be attacking it. The judgments are up to us. The everything outside of that, all the things outside those externals are not up to us. Epictetus, a stoic philosopher said, man is not disturbed by things that happen but by their opinions of those things. Think about that. That's what knocks you off course. That's what disturbs you. That's what fucks you up is when you are disturbed by your own opinions in your own head, not about the sh- not just the shit that happened, but how you deal with the shit that happens, how you perceive, how you think about the things that happen. And then the way you think about it affects the way you actually take now voluntary action on what happened. And listen, as a man, You can't make your happiness dependent on other things or people. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, I've heard you say just in a recent episode that as a man, your significance is dependent on things outside of yourself. Yes, your significance is dependent on things outside of yourself because that's our purpose as a man is to have a higher calling and have a family and be a father. That is the significance of a father is dependent on something outside of ourselves, but not your happiness. Your happiness is cannot be dependent on something outside of you, outside of yourself. You have to create that yourself, that own self-worth and self-happiness. So, and, and I've ex- written about this and thought about this and studied this extensively, this kind of dichotomy between the man's dependence versus internal versus external. Like, all right, if we need, and it's a crazy, it's wild. It makes me even think about more about, I'll probably dive into this and write some more about this today because it's such a wild thing that, All right, if you can't rely on your happiness on things outside of yourself, but your significance does rely on things outside of yourself, and I believe in both of those things, all right, there's some, a little more digging into that to make that a little more clear. So, but in general, there's, there's three stages to everything that happens. All right. So first shit happens. Second, your perceptions, opinions, and biases and thoughts about the shit that happened. And then third, your actual voluntary actions after those opinions and biases and thoughts about the shit that happened. So you have the event, you have your judgment about the event, and then you have your response, or you have an action, your judgment, and then a reaction. And make no mistake about it. If you take nothing else from this podcast today, understand that middle step. Step number two is the most important, probably area of your life that you need to control as a fucking man. That is the most important split, and it's a billionth of a second sometimes, the most important billionth of a second of your freaking life. Because as men, we usually frequently are irrational in that middle second step where we make our judgments. And then those judgments affect our actions that we take, and then we're in a world of shit, 
And literally that billionth of a second is so important. It could be the difference between life in prison and a life as a free man because of our stupid judgments, which lead to stupid freaking reactions. And our task is to be aware of that middle step, that, that middle, that's why I call it judgment day. It's not just a, a second. It's not just a billion. It is literally judgment day. Your judge, you are, that is leading. That is the determining the outcome of your life. Every time you come to that moment of judgment, you are determining the, the direction and the trajectory of your life. And sometimes complete extreme changes of directory depending on how you make those judgments as a freaking man. Is our task to be aware of that middle step and then control ourselves from there. Control the fuck out of that middle step. Because we don't react to events. We react to our judgments about them. And our judgments are up to us. So 100% up to you as a man. We don't react to things in the world or even reality. We don't react to, react to reality. We react to our own reality in our own minds, the way we think. And guess what? We have complete control over those judgments, over those thoughts. We just choose to let them run wild and get manipulated and pulled like puppet strings by letting other people control our thoughts and emotions. And then we react to those thoughts and emotions. So technically, other people are controlling our conscious thoughts, if you think about it that. Because they are manipulating you as a man to get irrational and you then lose control, but then you make that decision. I'm pissed off. I'm going to go and do this. They literally convince you to make a conscious action, a conscious decision. So this is where self-control, self-restraint, emotional discipline, we've done an entire episode on emotional discipline and how you react to things is all in that middle step, that billionth of a second. You need to live your life as a man, a billionth of a second at a freaking time. Victor Frankel, it said it was Victor Frankel, then it was said it was other people, whatever, and uh, Stephen Covey says it was someone else or it was in some other books before Victor. I don't know, don't care. But between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose a response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. Like think about it, your freedom is in that tiny little billionth of a second space, that microscopic amount of time. It lies your growth, your freedom, and your success, your wealth, your health, your happiness, your fulfillment, all lies in that billion of a second. That's crazy. That space between this stimulus and response is, is the most important time of your life because it's where people can, where you can choose to, to respond thoughtfully instead of impulsively. And it's also free. It's the most important thing. It's free and it's available to you right now and you have complete fucking control of it right now if you choose to operate the way you should be as a freaking man with controlled reason and rationality, a rational male that makes rational judgments. So being aware of this space is literally, is, is really what we talk about, about being intentional, intentionality, being a purpose-driven, present man, choosing your response instead of just reacting. Sometimes we even skip that whole middle section. We don't even think about it. It's just react. It's stimulus react, and we skip the whole section. It just blur. It blurs by, and, and we go straight into reacting, and that's when a whole world of fucking trouble comes in. And if you, you do that, you're going to be missing out on opportunities. You're going to be fucking up opportunities. But if you do have that conscious, reasonable, rational judgment in between in that billionth of a second, you're going to increase your opportunities for growth. You're going to be more free from negativity and bullshit. You're going to have more happiness and freaking fulfillment in life. And you, we need to get out of the habit of just being so emotional and reacting and getting pissed off for stupid shit that usually we get pissed off and, and have fights and arguments, whatever, with your, your business partners or your spouse, your kids, whatever it is. And it's like the end of the world and you're gonna hold your ground, you're gonna plant your feet in the ground. And guess what? A week or two weeks from now, you won't even fucking remember what, you, what it was about because you got hijacked. You got mentally, emotionally freaking hijacked. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. It's that middle section, that second stage that, that judgment day, that matters. It's the only thing that you have complete control of. So what, what can you control? 
Let's just break a basic, simple list. Because yeah, you could say it's just your judgments and your, your intentional actions, but you can control your discipline. You can control your, your character. You can control the effort that you put forward. You can control your energy and how you show up and your attitude, how you show up. You can control your positivity and how you show up. You can control how you talk and act and think. And really, in the reverse order, how you think, talk, and act. Usually, how you think is going to affect how you talk, which is going to affect how you act. So it goes back to, yeah, that internal thought, those internal freaking judgments. You have absolute freaking control of those things, and we lose track of that. And we get so focused on the things we can't control. So what can't you control? You really can't control your health. You can't control how other people react. You can't control how other people treat you. You can't control if other motherfuckers like you. You can do all you want, and someone could still freaking hate you, no matter who you are. You can't control whether in business, whether a prospect buys from you or if a client cancels your services or you have a prospect or a friend even that does business with another competitor. You can get pissed off about it. You can get emotional. You can get irrational. You can start an argument asking why did you do this and all this other stuff, but you can't fucking control it. So there's no need. If you can't control the stuff, why do we get worked up and why do we get sucked into it? If you had zero control of it, I don't want to say zero, but you don't have absolute control over it. These outside forces, these external things, something outside of ourselves, outside of our power, and we let those things control most of our time and our energy. And it robs you of freedom. It robs you of fucking sanity. It robs you of your time and energy and life and legacy. Now, of course, I want to have power and control in my life. I wish I had control over whether every prospect bought from me or no client ever left or no, no employees ever tried to steal from you or that your, your prospects or friends go and do business with a, a competitor. Of course, I want to have complete power control, but you can't. But we stress, think about those. Those are personal situations, and we stress the shit out of those when you shouldn't be because you don't have control of them. Now, sure, you can try and attempt to change the percentages maybe of control. You can influence these things and give it a better chance of of working out in your favor in the future, but you will never have absolute complete control over those things. So how do we have more self-control? It's all the basic foundational daily disciplines we talk about all the time. So we don't need to spend a ton of time in them because we've talked about these things so many times, but meditation, journaling and writing. We know eating and sleeping and training and working out, doing hard shit, having a purpose, something higher and bigger and outside of yourself. This stuff makes you have more self-control because we're talking about things we can and can't control, but then we also need to talk about a control freak in controlling ourselves, self-control, having a purpose bigger and bigger and, and outside of ourselves is something that could give us that self-control. We also need to learn how to ride the freaking wave. We talked about it in the emotional discipline about staying centered, staying in the green, cutting the peaks and valleys. So you learn to ride the wave and continue to build resilience and not get crumbling under the pressure of adversity and changing and controlling ourselves is much more effective and realistic and possible than attempting to change and control someone else or a situation or the freaking world. I'm going to repeat that one. I think this is a, a powerful thing. Changing and controlling ourselves is much more freaking effective, realistic, and possible than trying to, to change and control someone else or a, a situation or the freaking world. Like, And I'm not saying that this means... You need to just empty your mind, be a robot and just straightforward and robotic and zombie-like, but you need to clean your mind of the nonsense and the foolishness and the false judgments and learn how to make rational decisions in that billionth of a second where it becomes almost automatic, where you're killing that fear and doubt, procrastination and negativity and that bullshit self-talk and the bullshit stories that you're telling yourself. Because not being able to govern Uh, who said this? Montaigne said, not being able to govern events, I govern myself. And if they will not adapt to me, then I adapt to them. Damn, think about that. If you're not able to govern events, you can't control and have overseeing everything that goes on. You know what you do? You govern yourself. And then if after you govern yourself, if the events don't adapt to you as you've governed yourself, 
then I adapt to them. That's talk about, that is being in control. So no matter what the situation, no matter how things react in the outside world, I'm in control. Whether I'm in control how I act myself or how I, how I adapt, how I overcome, how I deal with adversity. And this is the difference between self-control and the difference between what we control and what we can't control. And men are always, a, a majority of the time, I don't want to say always, but regularly and often on the wrong side of that freaking coin and we get stuck in the shit we can't control and we lose sight of the shit we can control and we're putting all of our time and focus and energy on the wrong shit and then we wonder why we're not where we want to be in our relationships, in business, in life and the legacy we're leaving for our family and for our kids. Now, if this stuff is clicking with you, it's vibing with you, it's making sense, I want you to go to freakmode40.com. On freakmode40.com, you will have absolutely free access to a course called the Freak Mode 40. It's a daily discipline habit challenge that helps you incorporate all this stuff so you can bring order to chaos as a man in your family, your fitness, your business, and just your life in general. It's all part of the Freak Father Alliance Men's Mentorship Group Coaching Program where we dive into the mindset, muscle, money, mission, mastery, and meaning where I help entrepreneur fathers and men develop a no excuses mindset so they can build more muscle, make more money, have more meaning so you can finally attack your mission as a man and create your ideal lifestyle with time, freedom for your families. So go to freakmode40.com. I'll also put a, a link down in the show notes and in the description in the bottom and a, I'll put a comment, a pinned comment in the bottom also, freakmode40.com. Easy to remember, completely free. 40-day course. This is a $200 course where you're going to learn to have these daily disciplines, daily habits that are going to help you have more control, more self-control, and help you focus on the things you can control versus the things you can't control. It's the freakmode40.com. Check it out. I want to hear down below about some of the areas where you have been wasting time and focusing on things you can't control versus what you should be controlling. And then I want to hear how the Freak Mode 40 is going for you. The 40-day daily discipline habit and accountability challenge. Go check it out, freakmode40.com. I will see you next time on the Steve Eckert Show. And in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses.